you might have the exact same VO2 max as another athlete. They might even have a slightly higher VO2 max than you. But if your threshold, the percentage at which you can work it without producing lactic acid, which is efficiency, um, if yours is higher than the athlete who may have a higher VO2 than you, then you can, in, in, in certain races, you can work at higher intensities without burning and having to reduce that intensity. Hi guys and welcome to another Tips with Tipu video. Today I want to talk about VO2 max. What is VO2 max and how do we train VO2 max? So VO2 max is the volume of oxygen that the body can utilize under strenuous exercise. It's the maximum amount of oxygen that the body can utilize. Um, this can be measured. Um, basically the easiest way to measure it would be on a VO2 max machine, which, you know, calculates how much oxygen that your body takes in um, and how much carbon dioxide is expelled. And the difference there, you're able to figure out how much, how efficient the body is at utilizing exercise, um, how, how much oxygen your muscles are using. So, um, Basically, when we exercise, no matter what the exercise is, as the intensity of the exercise increases, um, so does our heart rate, so does our breathing rate, um, you know, things, our aerobic kinetics um, tend to increase. And then as we increase exercise, over time, short period of time, relatively short period of time, those um, kinetics will plateau, they'll tend to plateau. Heart rate will plateau, breathing rate will plateau. Um, there's a point where we can no longer um, increasing it. We can't. We can no longer increase intensity, um, and things start to plateau. This takes you. Know, this takes um, upwards of six minutes. Um, could be could be less, but um, a simple way of of testing uh, VO2 max heart rate. Uh, a usual test for that is usually um, going max intensity for for, for six minutes. Um, this allows enough time for your aerobic kinetics to plateau. If it's for if it was if you were exercising for say less than one minute, um, arguably it's not enough time for those aerobic kinetics to fully kick in um, because a lot of the anaerobic system might be um, um, contributing to energy in that short period of time. So, um, so yeah, everybody basically has a VO2 max measurement, and that's measured in uh, mils per you know per liter of uh, of blood per kilogram or or whatever. That's kind of irrelevant, but basically we have a measurement. We have an um, an absolute measurement, which is how much oxygen the body uses, and then we have a relative measurement which is uh, divided by your body weight, basically. So one way of, of simply increasing VO2 max is having a high um, absolute VO2 with a low body, lower body weight. Um, because the, the oxygen that your body is using, you've got, say, less muscle that is needing the oxygen. So by having a lower body weight, um, you can have a higher relative VO2 max. But I'm not saying that being lighter is better because obviously we need muscle in certain um, uh, contexts in racing, especially when it comes to sprints. So um, not saying which is, which is better, just saying in terms of relative VO2, you can increase your relative VO2 by actually simply dropping body weight. There, to, to some degree, in endurance races, having lower body weight can be a more efficient because you've got less muscle to supply oxygen, um, but also just pad paddling with good technique and form and efficiency can contribute to that anyway. So how do we train VO2 max? Um, VO2 max, like I said, is maximum 
amount of oxygen that the body can use. Therefore, it requires maximum intensity. Um, so usually doing interval work with a one-to-one -one work to rest ratio. So um, whether it's one minute, two minute, three minute sprints, you're going to have equivalent rest time. Um, that allows you to recover enough so that you can go hard again for your next repetition. Um, so interval work, upwards of an hour or less, um, between intervals between one to four minutes, even upwards of six minutes, um, especially if you're doing like a, a VO2 max test where you want to figure out what your VO2 max heart rate is, you can race for six minutes and and allow all your kinetics to plateau. Um, VO2 max, however, VO2 max is partly, um, although it can be improved with training, VO2 max is relatively predispositioned via genetics. So what I'm saying is, although you can increase your VO2 max through training, it's partly genetic in, in, in the fact that your, your VO2 is predispositioned. Um, what I mean by that is you could be born with um, an abnormally large heart, which gives you abnormally large VO2 max measures. Um, what's, a, what's potentially a more important um, thing to take into account rather than VO2 max, which is up here, this is your VO2 max, is what, I, is what you call the anaerobic threshold. The anaerobic threshold sits normally sits around 80 to 90% um, of your VO2 max in trained individuals, maybe less in untrained in individuals. However, your anaerobic threshold can be significantly improved. And so your threshold is basically the point at which you can work without over accumulating lactic acid, which hinders your, your intensity. So rather, like I said, your VO2 max can't really increase a lot, but your anaerobic threshold, a percentage of your VO2 max can increase significantly when you train um, aerobically or in and around that anaerobic threshold, that will help to push that threshold closer to your VO2 max, VO2 max so that you can work harder um, without accumulating lactic acid. For, here's a good example. You might have the exact same VO2 max as another athlete. They might even have a slightly higher VO2 max than you. But if your threshold, the percentage at which you can work at without producing lactic acid, which is efficiency, um, if yours is higher than the athlete who may have a higher VO2 than you, then you can, in, in, in certain races, you can work at higher intensities without burning and having to reduce that intensity. Um, so VO2 max is important. It gives you a really solid baseline, um, uh, a, a measurement that of your performance capacity. However, your threshold and um, your ability to improve your threshold has a good positive influence on your overall performance. Anyway, that's my tip for the day. A little bit intro introduction of um, VO2 max and um, anaerobic threshold. Hope everybody's going well. If you have any questions, fire them through and I'll look to adjust them in the next train of uh, tips with Tupu video. Kakite.